filming outside today because it is absolutely gorgeous. Today I wanted to talk about the life of a writer. I'm a writer, it's what I'm going to college for, it's what I want to do with the rest of my life, it's my passion, it is my dream. Creative writing encompasses a huge group of things and I like to do all of it. I write novels, I write plays, I write screenplays, kids books, comics. Bugs are driving me crazy. There are a lot of little things in a writer's life that other people don't even realize because, I mean, they're not obvious things. They are to a writer, I suppose. I'm pretty sure I'm on at least one government watch list or something because of my browser history. Writing takes a lot of research, even if it is for fiction, which is what I like to do. I, I write fiction. I don't like nonfiction. <laughs> Sorry to all those nonfiction buffs out there, but it's not my thing. <sighs> ah, too many bugs. My writing has a very wide range. At times it can have a lot of levity, but at other times it can get really dark. Okay, I am getting attacked by black flies and deer flies. And if you don't know what those are, <laughs> you are very lucky. So I am going to go inside. It takes a lot of medical research if your characters get into a lot of bad situations. <laughs> so I've looked up some things that probably put me on a list. Someone might ask me, why were you looking this up? I'll start talking about my characters like they're real people. Oh, you don't understand. Jeff, he's, he's going through some rough PTSD from this awful torture he went through while he was a prisoner of war and I needed to know what the effects of waterboarding and all these horrible, gruesome tortures were, and they're like, oh, it's all for the good of the writing. So if I'm on some list out there, this is why. I'm just a writer. I think my mind was designed specifically for creative processing and writing because, because I have a lot of issues. That sound, that was not what I, that's not what it sounds, that's not what I meant. It creates problems with life sometimes when you have this mind that is always on. I call it being in the zone, <laughs> which is cheesy. So you have, let me try and get this in terms that won't sound crazy. So there's the mind, there's the zone, and there's this hallway. I kinda, you kinda fall back down the hallway into your zone and you're just thinking, creating stories, ideas. It's, and then when someone pulls you out, and you realize you've missed the past 10 minutes of conversation. It's frustrating because it happens without you knowing it or allowing it. You just slip into this state of mind. This really affects my sleeping schedule. I can be tired and I can want to sleep, but when I lay down, mind is awake and I can't shut it off. Say I'm trying to go to bed at midnight. I'll get in my bed, crawl on my covers, and my mind won't shut off for two hours. dimension. What if he drowned in the shower? What if he tripped over an egg? What if? No. Go to sleep. It's four in the morning. Yeah, but what if the tree exploded? As a writer, I have two very distinct weaknesses. These are very serious things. Barnes and Noble and Staples. There goes my wallet. I could live in Barnes and Noble. A lot of people have nooks now. As an avid reader, I probably should have gotten a nook ages ago when they first came out. My bookshelf's already overloaded, but I love holding a book in my hands. And then there's the problem where if you're buying a series and you start buying in softcover, and then as the series continues, the new one's not out yet, and then it comes out, but of course, when it first comes out, it's only in hardcover, and you can't have a series of soft covers and then have a hardcover, you can't do it. My Harry Potter series is half hardcover, half soft cover. I wish they were all the same. <laughs> Staples is a weakness because that has all of my favorite things. I go through legal pads and pens like nothing else. I love writing supplies. For a writer, legal pads and pens are the way to her heart. <laughs> 
No, that might be just me, and that's not entirely true, but it is true. I always find it hilarious when you go to Staples and you're in the writing utensil aisle and then you go to the big locked box with the pens that are over a hundred dollars and you're thinking, what is this? I'm not gonna pay over a hundred dollars for a pen. This is so stupid and I must have it. There's something about those expensive pens that's just like, ooh, cool. I don't know, you know, because when things are more expensive they tend to be better quality? Pens are expensive when you're not getting a hundred dollar pen. When I have to pay twelve dollars for two pens, I vowed to myself that I'm never gonna buy one of those because it's a pen. It's probably not worth it. <laughs> I don't think there's anything more personal than a book. It's terrifying writing a book and then giving it to someone else to read it because you pour yourself into that thing. I mean, every single one of your characters takes something from you and you care about them like actual people which is why it is so so hard to kill off one of your characters it's way more traumatizing for the author than it is for the reader they created this character they nursed them they gave them life and then they took it away I have a really really hard time killing off characters because you've created this person and their person inside of your heart and then you kill them and it's sad and it's awful and you feel terrible. Sympathize with the author because it's horrible. <sighs> when writing, your characters tend to get minds of their own. Sometimes I'll be writing and a character will do something that I hadn't planned on. Peter tentatively reached out, as if afraid that the artifact would burn him. But when his fingers met the stone, it was cool to the touch. Peter wondered how such a harmless-looking object could be cursed, but perhaps that was the beauty of curses. There was the echo of a step, faint, but impossible to miss with the hunter's hearing. Peter spun on the spot, his bow drawn and aimed towards the direction the noise had come. After days of navigating his way through beast-infested wilderness, he could hardly be blamed for being on edge. Peter froze as a cloaked figure stepped out from behind a tree and... What was that? I thought it was another bandit. Peter! They were going to help you. You shot them. You dressed them really suspiciously. I spent hours designing that character. Well, don't blame me. All right, look, I'll just, I'll backspace and just don't shoot them this time. Peter froze as a cloaked figure stepped out from behind a tree and... Again? Well, I'm sorry. My nerves are shot right now. I've been traveling through the wilderness killing beasts and bandits. So yeah, I shot him. What's up? What? No need to bite my head off. What's wrong? My character just killed someone and ruined a plot line. You, you wrote it. Can't you change it? No, he's not listening. He says his nerves are frayed, the cheeky little. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna go. Um, good luck with whatever you're doing. I hope you get help. One of the greatest things as a writer is the epiphany. Not an epiphany a character has, but an epiphany the actual author has. When you have a really good idea, I mean, you have, you've been working on this story, yeah, 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 it's coming along great, and then all of a sudden something clicks and everything goes, oh my goodness, that would be amazing. And you just, your world opens up and it's like, oh, I can't believe I thought of this. I am a genius. You can impress yourself sometimes, and this epiphany is when that happens most often. You have an idea, and everything just seems so much more awesome. When you have an idea like that, it's really inspiring. And you just write it down, and you look around, and everyone else is going, you know, normal lives, and you're just like, ah, you're so elated. And you're just so 
pumped and you're, you're like, oh, this is great. I just had an idea. Like, we'll be sitting down watching a movie and I'll, I'll be kind of drifting down the hallway into my zone and then I'll get an idea and we're still watching this movie, but I haven't seen what happened for the past two minutes and then I'll sit up straight and I'll go, I've had an idea! And everyone will just be like, shh, we're watching a movie. And you don't understand how other people aren't as excited as you are because it's such a big deal. If I hear something that I can use in a book, I will write it down instantly because I forget things. One great thing about being a writer is that you're never really bored because if you start to get bored, like, oh, what is there to do? And then, oh, I can work on my story or, oh, I can create a new character. Oh, I can make an idea. I can make a map. I can, I can write a play. I can write anything. The creative world is so huge. When I was little and supposed to be getting into trouble, I wouldn't be threatened with the typical, oh, you're grounded or you're not allowed to go to this party until you get this done. My mom would say, give me your book. Give me your writing pad. Give me your pencils. And I, it was like, no, I'll do it. I'll do it. You can't take that away from me. One of the questions that's really irksome when it's asked is that when I say, oh yeah, I've, I've written a book and someone asks, oh yeah, what was it about? Well, well, um, when someone says, what's it about? Your mind automatically starts filling with all the things that you put in the book. And it's like, there's too much to tell you. It's about so many things. There's this and this and this and this and this blah 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 blah. And I could go on for hours because I've spent years of my life working on this piece of work. Now I have a response that I've kind of planned out ahead of time so when people ask me what it's about I can tell them, oh well it's about this blah 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 blah. I'm like, oh that's cool. So that's all for this video. I'm sorry if this was something that you're not particularly interested in but it's such a huge part of my life that I felt I'd be cheating if I left it out. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like or subscribe and leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.